Domain 4, Element 4.6, Multicultural and Social Justice Instruction, Ensuring Equity and Access to All Students, created by Angela Baber and Kim Durley, February 2016. The road to diversity and equality in education has not been an easy one. In the past, education was neither accessible nor equal for people of varying backgrounds. In the 1700s, we had the educational oppression of slaves in the United States due to the fear of slaves communicating with each other, resulting in an uprising against authority. In the 1800s, women were discouraged from educating because it was seen as unnatural for a woman to be educated. In 1896, we had the segregation and education case, Plessy versus Ferguson. But this was overturned with segregation being deemed unconstitutional with the Brown versus Board of Education case in 1954. We had the Civil Rights Act in 1964, which was a pivotal case in history. 1968 was the Bilingual Education Act, which provided funds to educate students with limited English speaking abilities. 1974, we had the Education no, or Equal Education Opportunities Act. This prohibited discrimination against faculty, staff, and students. 2002, we had the No Child Left Behind, and 2009, the Common Core Initiative. We will speak of both of these momentarily. Diverse instruction is not so common. So, what is diverse classroom instruction? Well, let's talk about what it is not first. It is not the classroom of the past. Past classrooms lack diversity in instruction. Students were taught without individuality or tailoring to the child's specific needs. Instruction was the one-size-fits-all or box approach. It lacked the knowledge of the student's background, and it didn't incorporate it. It didn't engage students, and it didn't intrinsically connect students to the instruction. Recent legislation, such as the No Child Left Behind Act, had good intentions. It was an attempt to ensure that every student had access to a proper education. It required a system of testing to confirm that students were indeed being provided the education all children are entitled. However, there was a problem. Diversity, being key in education, was not a part of the No Child Left Behind Act. It required students to test the same way regardless of their ability or their skills. Additionally, some students just cannot take a test well. Diverse students need diverse methods of grasping the curriculum, as well as diverse methods of assessment. The No Child Left Behind Act lacked diversity at its core. The Common Core Initiative is a state-based effort to define what state should be teaching and what children should be learning across the country. The intent, a student-centered, deep-level thinking, reflective and collaborative curriculum. The reality, reliance on testing that leads to teaching the test and fragmented skill building. So what is diverse instruction? Well, diverse instruction is multicultural and socially just. It's a perfectly balanced curriculum that's accessed by all students, representative of all students, and enjoyed by all students. Let's take a look at an equation which would fit balanced diverse instruction perfectly. Differentiated instruction plus culturally responsive teaching will equal a balanced diverse instructional program. Diverse instructional strategies and classrooms that are equitable while focusing on student learning require the following elements. Knowing and respecting each student's background and the way they learn best, a positive student teacher rapport, the ability to adapt and modify instruction, using diverse assessments, collaborative learning, cooperative learning, inquiry based learning, and connecting the curriculum to the student's real world experiences. It also requires fair treatment and high expectations of students. Some of our best practices in diverse instructional strategies. Let's take a look. The first day of school, our students complete a learning style questionnaire. They make a name tent with their determined learning style, and they add information about themselves and their families. Our students mingle and learn about each other and welcome each other to the classroom family. See, learning styles are important because they acknowledge individual differences. They also allow students to monitor their own learning. Additionally, they allow teachers to accommodate the differences in learning styles and use them effectively. 
We also build a positive student teacher rapport with our students. We welcome frequent communication and we provide resources to parents via a classroom website or student emails. We challenge students with a rigorous curriculum that incorporates their daily world, their families, and their community. We ensure metacognitive strategies are a staple in our classrooms because students must be aware of their own learning in order to truly learn. There is differentiation, modification, and adaptation across the board. They're staples in our room. We also use trouble groups and small groupings, peer tutoring and peer editing, and many other collaborative activities to engage students and expose them to students from other backgrounds. During the first week, students create a successful doll template. They place characteristics of a successful student on a doll they color to look like themselves. The doll state what the expected goal is for each student to become a successful student. We integrate diverse reading lists across cultures. We create multicultural projects that call for a student to choose a background other than their own. And we have created a safe and trusting and nurturing environment for our students. There are many resources for diverse instructional strategies. They are listed in this slide presentation. One of the books, Becoming a Multicultural Educator by Geneva Gay, is a great resource. There's also a learning style inventory link, and this will quickly assess the student's learning style. Strengths lie in differences, not similarities. This is a quote by Stephen Covey. I hope you enjoyed this. PowerPoint slide presentation.